strategic cost benefit analysis. We all know that cost benefit analysis is the application of the new classical economic calculus to the fields of public decision making. In this lesson, we will explain the strategic cost benefit analysis, its methods and approaches, define the organizational structures and its advantages and disadvantages, and measure the divisional profits of an organization. After going through this presentation, you should be able to explain strategic cost benefit analysis, methodology and approaches of cost benefit analysis, divisional performance measurement, profit and investment center, functional and divisionalized organizational structures, alternative divisional profit measures, and limitation of financial performance measures. A cost-benefit analysis CBA is the analysis of an opportunity to demonstrate the benefits in cost saving in order to receive management commitment and support to implement. The change in business climate has resulted in an increased focus on an organization's bottom line. This has affected business decision making requiring CBA to be utilized for all major purchases expansions and organizational changes. It identifies, quantifies and subtracts all the negatives, the costs. The difference between the two indicates whether the plan action is advisable. The real trick to doing a cost benefit analysis well is making sure you include all the cost and all the benefits and properly quantify them. A cost benefit analysis finds quantifies and adds all the positive factors. Monetary valuation techniques vary but they all take the market as their yardstick. That is, referring constantly and directly to market price or else determine a fictitious price using various indirect methods. There are three methods for direct valuation of a cost or benefit. First is the value may be based on that of an alternative good or service available on the market. Second is it may be deduced from the value of the complementary private good or service which enables the intensity of demand for the public good to be measured in terms of the amount of the cash costs relating to its consumption. Third is it may be inferred from that of an associated product which exists in the market. These two methods are based on statistical techniques for sounding the opinion of target populations. It is recommended that CBA be approached as a multiple step process beginning with a preliminary survey which is followed by a feasibility study. A preliminary survey is conducted as an initial evaluation of an opportunity. Its purpose is information gathering on the existing situation as compared to the CBA opportunity. A feasibility study finalizes any outstanding data gathering, assesses the data in detail and completes the analysis process. It provides final confirmation if the CBA opportunity offers the benefits initially projected. The objective is to develop performance measurement systems for divisions that are significant investment centers in large organizations. Such systems should provide information for economic decisions, facilitate the control of division operations, motivate managers to achieve high levels of divisional performance so as to further the objectives of the entire organization and serve as a basis for evaluating the performance of divisional managers. Divisionalization represents the concept of delegated profit and to some extent investment responsibility. Divisions usually perform many of the basic business functions themselves such as planning, production, accounting, marketing and some financing activities. Divisionalized operations make use of specialized skills such as knowledge about a particular product, a particular type of customer, a market or a geographic area. 
The idea is to better utilize specialized knowledge by letting the managers with the specialized knowledge make more decisions. Divisional operations provide a good training ground for top management positions because a division manager has the opportunity to make a variety of decisions which would not be possible in either functional areas or in positions of limited responsibility. Each division should be sufficiently independent of other divisions with respect to both production activities and marketing activities to make its separate profit responsibility a meaningful reality. Relations between divisions must be regulated so that no division, by seeking its own profit, can reduce that of the corporation. Divisionalized administrative systems are more expensive to operate so that the benefits must outweigh the added costs. It requires more administrative talent to operate a firm. Sufficient talent may not be available at any one point in time. A profit center is a management-oriented organizational unit used for internal controlling purposes. The essential difference between a profit center and a business area is that profit centers are used for internal control, while business areas are more geared towards an external viewpoint. The profit center differs from a cost center in that cost centers merely represent the units in which capacity costs arise, whereas the person in charge of the profit center is responsible for its balance of costs and revenues. Profit center management is equivalent to running an independent business because a profit center business unit or department is treated as a distinct entity enabling revenues and expenses to be determined and its profitability to be measured. An investment center is a classification used for business units within an enterprise. The essential element of an investment center is that it is treated as a unit which is measured against its use of capital as opposed to a cost or profit center which is measured against raw cost or profits. The advantage of this form of measurement is that it tends to be more encompassing since it accounts for all uses of capital. An organizational structure is a mainly hierarchical concept of subordination of entities that collaborate and contribute to serve one common aim. Organizational structure allows the expressed allocation of responsibilities for different functions and processes to different entities such as the branch. In the functional organization, each job becomes the focus point. Similar function-based jobs done by the employees are put together in silos in the functional structured-based organization. Specialization is centralized and employees who are doing these specialized jobs are clustered. Thus, each unique department is born. The functional areas will have personnel with varied skills, but those skills are grouped on their similarities. A functional organization is best suited as a producer of standardized goods and services at large volume and low cost. Functional organizational structures are ideal for organizations having a loan product or a cluster of products which can easily group under a single head. It provides an easy path for the employees to grow within the organization sideways as well as upwards in the organizational tree. Divisional structure is also called a product structure. The divisional structure groups each organizational function into divisions. Divisions can be categorized from different points of view. There can be made a distinction on geographical basis or on product or service basis. Divisional organizational structure is basically a kind of organizational structure that is characterized by divisions inside an organization. These divisions are based on the working of an organization. The divisional organizational structure breaks the public, private or non-profit firm into a series of semi-autonomous units. The multi-divisional structure breaks down according to product, market or geographic considerations.
The alternative divisional profit measures are first, divisional income. It is a measure of divisional performance that is analogous to corporate net income for evaluating overall company performance. Divisional income is most meaningful as a performance measure when compared to the same division in prior periods or to budgeted income for the division. Second, return on investment ROI. ROI provides a useful overall approximation on the success of a firm's past investment policy by providing a summary measure of the ex post return on capital invested. Next is residual income RI. Residual income is probably the closest proxy that accounting provides for the concept of economic profits. Hence, residual income probably comes close to measuring what shareholders really care about. Residual income is net operating income or net after tax earnings plus interest or net of the tax effect less the desired rate of return on investment multiplied by the amount of investment. Next, economic value added. The calculation of EVA includes a deduction for the cost of capital and also adjusts accounting income to more accurately reflect the economic effect of transactions and the economic value of assets and liabilities. The EVA concept extends the traditional RI measure by incorporating adjustments to the divisional financial performance measure for distortions introduced by generally accepted accounting principles GAAP. EVA is consistent with maximizing shareholder funds. Economic depreciation is difficult to estimate and conflicts with generally accepted accounting principles which may hinder its acceptance by financial managers. Due to timing differences between cash flows and income flows, performance is being measured on a basis that may be inconsistent with the investment criteria in use by management and by investors in the firm. Accounting measures are relatively insensitive to the time value of money except that portion reflected by the explicit interest cost. Unrealized changes in resource prices are extremely important in some situations but are reported on a limited ad hoc basis. Depreciation patterns tend to overstate the trend in ROA and RI especially if they are calculated on net investment. The annuity method of computing depreciation is an exception. For short and intermediate periods, accounting measures of corporate performance may provide inconsistent signals. The most troublesome inconsistency is between ROA and EPS. Now let us check if you have understood the various concepts discussed in this lesson clearly. The most common methods of measuring divisional performance are absolute profits, profits expressed as a percentage of equity and residual income. Right or wrong? Wrong. Divisional performance measurement should be based on a combination of financial and non-financial measures using the balanced scorecard approach. Right or wrong? Right. A cost-benefit analysis finds, quantifies and adds all the positive factors. Right or wrong? Right. Before we end, let us briefly revise what we had studied till so far. Cost-benefit analysis is an extremely powerful weapon. Because of its indiscriminate application to all the groups concerned and the standard nature of its mathematical method, the money indicator is an extremely simple synthetic criteria for decision making. A major problem is the complex and varied nature of the field of analysis. The most common methods of measuring divisional performance are absolute profits, profit expressed as a percentage of investment ROI and residual income. Under the EVA approach performance measurement gains a new meaning in contrast with the traditional approach which is based on accounting profits and the relevant ratios derived from them. Financial performance measures 
cannot stand alone as a measure of divisional performance. Profitability is only one of the factors contributing to a company's objectives. Divisional performance measurement should be based on a combination of financial and non-financial measures using the balanced scorecard approach. Divisional performance should be evaluated within a balanced scorecard context taking into account both financial and non-financial measures. The major difficulty relating to such relative evaluations is finding benchmark units that face similar conditions and uncertainties.